red leather. Hey, what's going on there viewers? My name is Chris and in this video, I'm gonna give you guys eight tips and tricks for how to improve the performance of your trading software. This is gonna be a pretty simple list. Most of you guys probably already know some of the things on this list, but this is a checklist that you can use to make sure that your system is performing optimally and that it's configured optimal so that way you can get the most out of your trading software. And maybe you'll learn a few things about software in this video, so stick around and let's get to it. If you enjoy this content, remember to press the like button because it will inform people that this video is a good quality video for other people to watch regarding this topic. So let's get right to it. The first one is clean the inside of your computer. All right, so I'm gonna show you a picture right there. That's what the inside of a dirty computer looks like. And you gotta just understand, you know, over time it's accumulating lots of dust and your computer is full of hardware, fans and things that are moving around. And of course the dust has the ability to impact how those moving parts are operating. So you should definitely take one of those cans of compressed air and spray the inside of your computer. Do it outside your place, ideally. And uh, that's the first thing, all right? The second thing is, do not run any other programs on your system while trading. And we're gonna go over to the computer to talk about this one right here. We need to take out the hair. We need to inspire more people to become smart, but also smart cavemen, because hair is where it's at. All right, guys, I'm gonna bring you over to the task manager right here. We're on my Windows system. I've got my trading software opened. Control-Alt-Delete is gonna bring us to the task manager on our system. Basically, what you have to understand is that all the programs you're running on your system, whether they're programs here, apps or background processes, they are using some of your hardware. Most probably they're using some of your memory and they're using some of your processor. Um, and you wanna basically keep that to a minimum because you want your processor and your memory to be focused on the most important software that you're running, which is most probably your trading software if you're watching this or video editing software or music production software, whatever you're using. You basically need to remove all processes that are not related to what you're doing. So I'll give you an example. When I'm trading, I only run this right here, what you're looking at. Even task manager is not there. It's just Sierra chart one and two, OBS studio to record the screen and that's pretty much it. Every now and then I might open telegram desktop because it's quite lightweight, but that's about it. Now, if we look at background processes, sometimes here there can be other things running that you've installed on your system that you may have forgotten about. You don't even know about them anymore. The third point is basically if you have a 64 bit operating system, do not run any 32-bit applications. And if you do keep it to a minimum or very lightweight programs that are only essential that use basically no processing power. So in this case, this Razer Synapse thing here is controlling my keyboard here, which is an old Razer keyboard, but I like it very much. It's very reliable, or it has been at least. Um, the other one here is this light shot, which is sort of like a screenshot taking software, which really it doesn't use any power, so it's fine. Another example will be, let's say you run a video editing software, or music production software. The software itself might be 64, but the plugins inside of your software might be still 32 bit. And that is very bad. And that's why you can have very annoying crashes and things happening like that. This doesn't happen so much with trading software, but it's still good to know for other things. Okay, so keep everything 64-bit if you're using a 64-bit processor. And apps that have not yet created x64 versions are way behind their schedule, in my opinion. One of them is Spotify. That's a big embarrassment. Um, the next thing is, point number four, is get faster hardware. If you find that your hardware is really old and it's kind of unable to keep up with the processes that you're throwing at it, then you probably need new hardware. Now, in my case, I'm running a processor, which is an Intel Core i7-4790, running at a clock speed of 3.6 gigahertz, and it runs fine. I mean, look, it's not the state-of-the-art processor. It's far from it. But for what I need it for, it's perfect. I haven't had any issues with this because I keep things very minimal. Um, if you start requiring a lot more power, or maybe you switch to a trading software and this trading software is just not as well optimized as certain ones that we talk about here quite often, then maybe you'll need a better processor. I don't know. Um, so for example, let's say you run a high frequency trading system that you need to react to market data very fast. That doesn't have as much to do with your processor at that point. It has more to do with your internet connectivity. But your processor is still involved because of course that's what's being used to run the software. So the clock speed of the processor is important. In regards to memory, if you're running software that is requiring a lot of your memory, then you definitely probably need more memory. Um, it never hurts to have more memory. In this case, I have 16 gigabytes of memory on this system and I haven't had any issues with it. You know, if you're running a music production system or video editing system, most probably you're gonna need a lot more memory. While we're on the topic of memory, I guess we'll go to the next point here. I guess this is point number five now. Um, 
there's a third party software that exists called Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. And I know about this because I was watching a video of a French guy, a YouTuber, who was showing various performance optimizations on Windows. And you should go watch his video because he shows you how to turn off a lot of the data collecting settings in the actual Windows uh, settings. But you need to actually turn a lot of stuff off in Windows and that can actually help your input lag and your performance even more. Um, but what this does here, it's a program that helps your system, again, this is my own words, it helps your memory redistribute itself better in your system. Uh, and basically there's this thing called a standby list. Now, if we go back to the task manager, okay, and we go down to where it says open resource monitor, I'm gonna open this now. And if we go to memory, uh, here you can see how much memory is currently in use. And we can see this thing called standby. This is the standby list basically. So it's memory that is being reserved by a software, but it's not actively being used right now. It's not in use right now. Some of you guys in the comments can correctly state this if you know what it's really doing, but I'm pretty sure what it does is it helps redistribute this standby list and help to allocate and reallocate that memory more efficiently. Now that we're in the resource monitor, this is actually a good uh, menu to look at. We can see here which processes that are running on your system are using your network. In this case, this looks about right here with CR chart one and two using most of it. And then we have this Apple mobile device service, which I think I need to get rid of. So that's it, that's the resource monitor. Now let's talk about hyper-threading. For whatever software you're using, guys, you wanna determine either by asking developers of the software or just by determining it yourself using a, a manual method, like I can show you how to do it. You go to CPU right here, and you look at your cores operating here when your trading software is running. And you wanna see if your trading software is using multiple threads, multiple cores, or is it only operating on one core at a time? And that's how you're gonna determine if you need to turn hyper-threading on or off on your system. Now you can look up what hyper-threading does, but basically it takes the cores of your processor and it splits them in half. So instead of having four cores, I would have eight cores with hyper-threading enabled. Now I have it disabled because I know that Sierra Chart, for example, which is my trading software, is primarily a single threaded application. And most of the processing power that Sierra Chart uses is done on a single thread because it's the study calculations in, in the case of Sierra Chart. So what you would do is you would run your trading software and then you would just run it for a few minutes and let it allocate itself manually to your processor cores and then look at which cores are being used. Is it using all of them equally or is there one that's working more than another? And then what you do at that point is you go over to details, the details tab in the task manager and you can actually assign the software to a particular core on your processor. So you right click on the program and then you select set affinity and you can choose to assign it to a single core. So let's say you wanted to test it out, you would say assign it to core zero or core one, and then you would go back to this graph right here and you would look at if this graph has changed and which cores are being used more than others. I disable hyper-threading to make sure that single core performance is as good as it can be because when you have hyper-threading on, you're splitting those cores and since Sierra Chart's only gonna be using one core, you're actually gonna be limiting it to use only half of a core, I'm pretty sure. But again, I haven't looked at the graphs with hyper-threading on and off. I'm just kind of going with the knowledge that I have. So you can try it for yourself and see. I personally turn hyper-threading off. Point number six is related to hardware again, which is your hard drive. Regarding your trading software, you wanna most probably keep it on your C drive and you wanna keep your C drive not full. Pretty, you know, at least 30% of it has to be empty, like in this case. This is about fine the way I have it. Um, so I'm running my trading software on my C drive, which is a solid state drive, which means it's faster than an old style drive. I don't remember the name of them, hard disk drive. Um, so definitely you wanna be using solid state drives. And if you have the ability to use those newer M.2 or MVME hard drives, you should use those. My motherboard doesn't support that, so I don't have one. This F drive here is also a solid state drive that I use to run other software like video editing software or playing games, which I don't do very often these days. And then I just have some other storage drives like this D drive and other uh, external drives, which are fine. Certain softwares may be impacted by the read and write speed more than others, but most of the time, since we're talking about trading and market data, what it will impact is if you have to download data and download things within your trading software, you'll be able to do it faster with a faster hard drive. All right, let's go on. Point number six, let's go back to the task manager 
and I wanna talk about process priority, which is just a quick thing you can do. Um, so you go over to processes, details, I only do this on the primary instance of my trading software. What I'll do is I'll right click on it and I will set the priority to high. What this does is it tells your operating system to prioritize the CPU cycles that are associated with that program over the other ones that are running. So since I'm running two instances of Sierra chart, I'm basically telling it to prioritize that one instead of this one. Um, you should never set this to real time because at that point it can crash your system. It can interfere with operating system processes. Now, I don't know if this is going to have a noticeable difference, but what I do know is that you're telling your system to prioritize it. So it should theoretically be faster or more responsive. Okay. Now, since we're here, we can talk about the affinity again. Uh, since Sierra charts a single threaded application, you could, if you want, assign it to one core at a time. But I also do know that Sierra Chart uses multiple threads for its market data processing. So since I keep my processes very minimal, I don't touch this. I just leave it on all processors, um, even though it's still most of the time using one thread. All right, then the next point here, which is, I believe, point number seven or eight, I lost count at this point, is going to be learning about your trading software, whatever software it is you're using, and certain things of how you use the software of how that's impacting your processing power and the resources being used. So one thing that's, I guess, common sense, common knowledge is that if you have a program that allows you to detach windows out of the software like this, I have a detached chart here and my mouse is getting old. You can see there it is. I can move it around, detach it, drag it anywhere, minimize it, maximize it. I know for a fact that having detached windows like this does use more operating system powers than having them not detached. So if you wanna be more efficient, you should leave things attached to the main window of your software. In this case, I'm making a trade-off between performance and convenience because I do need these charts here on my primary screen in front of me and I'm using them as like a reference chart, okay? Um, so an example with TWS would be certain um, widgets within that software, like the options chain, for example. If you have the options chain wide open on your screen, I've looked at this and it does use more processing power than if you don't have it wide open on your screen. So you can do tests. You can have a certain layout of charts that you use for trading and then once in a while switch over to your options chain. But if you want to make sure that it's being as efficient as possible, you want to hide that options chain when you're not using it. And the other stuff's going to be related to what you're actually requesting out of the software. Of course, you know, it's still going to be limited to your hardware and your operating system. So if you're trying to use a trading software and you're using, I don't know, like 30, 40 charts, all with a whole bunch of indicators, well, of course, you're going to have a much higher processing load than someone like me who's using using a very minimal trading instance, one or two charts, and then another instance where I have all my other charts and indicators and crazy calculations and stuff. So that's it, guys. I hope this video gave you some pointers for how to improve the performance of your trading software. And if it did, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Go ahead and click on this video right here, which is a choice that YouTube thinks is good for you. So check it out. Take care.